believe that. Come on, we serve a God who turns graves into gardens. Hey, thank you for being here today. Uh, we are kicking off a brand new series called The Best Is Yet to Come. And I don't know if you believe that or not, but I've had a stomach bug for 48 hours and I'm believing that the best is yet to come. Come on. And, uh, and I just want to share a scripture for you. In, second, or in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it's kind of our theme verse for this entire series. Here's what Paul writes to the church who has seen some things, gone through some things, believing some things. He says this, that no eye has seen, nor ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. How many of you believe that? Come on, the best is yet to come. And today as we kick off this series, I just believe that you're gonna be stirred up in your faith. Over the next couple of weeks, I believe that God is gonna speak hope into a hopeless situation. And I really came to speak to somebody today who's going through something that you've been dealing with for a long time. Maybe you've been, maybe you've been struggling with something secretly. Maybe you've been praying for someone, but you haven't seen that prayer answered yet. Maybe you've just been to the point where you've seen some things and heard some things and you used to believe that God could turn it around. You used to believe that the best is yet to come, but now you're, you're struggling with it. And I just love what the writer of Hebrews says. He says that you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what He has promised. Turn to your neighbor and say, what you need to do is persevere. Now turn to the other neighbor and say, what you need to do is persevere. And so I just wanna to talk to somebody today who needs that encouragement in your spirit where you have a really difficult time believing that the best is yet to come i just believe that what you need to do is persevere so help me announce my sermon title to your neighbor tell them don't stop tell them don't stop turn to the other neighbor say don't stop let me pray for you father i thank you for your word god as we open it today we know that it's living and active sharper than a double-edged sword pierces our hearts. God, we didn't just come to go through the motions. We didn't come to sing corporate karaoke. We didn't just come for behavior modification. God, we came so that you could transform us from the inside out. So God, I just pray that today you would help us see that the best really is yet to come. That you would give us the faith, that you would give us the hope that you would help us trust you in such a way where we persevere through whatever it is we're going through, whatever it is we need help believing so that we can see your promise come to pass. We love you and we thank you. And in Jesus' name, everybody who believed is set. Come on, everybody said, amen. Hey, say hi to somebody next to you and you guys can have a seat. I wanna welcome two different people to our church today. Can we just give it up for all of our first time guests in the house today? Come on, thank you for being here. And can we give a loud, warm renovation welcome to everybody watching online. Thank you guys for being here, people watching all over the world. If you haven't shared our stream yet, I would ask you to do that. If you're watching online, let us know where you're watching from. You can share the stream as well. But I wanted to ask a question. How many of you have ever thought about quitting before? Come on, lift your hand if you've ever thought about quitting. All right, now who's gonna be honest with me and say, right now there is something in your life that you are considering walking away from? Lift your hand. Yeah. I think we've all had moments like that, right? Where we, we wanted something to happen and when it didn't happen the way we thought it should happen, we thought about quitting. Maybe for you it was a job and maybe you got that job, you're really excited about getting that job and you, you had a picture of what that job should look like. Maybe it was something you were passionate about. Maybe you got your degree in it and actually used your degree for your job. Come on, somebody. Um, and, and, and come to find out, it wasn't what you, what you thought it was gonna be. And now you're at a place where you're thinking about quitting. Maybe it's in a relationship. Maybe there was friction in, in a marriage or friction with a family member and you've tried to work through it, you've tried to forgive them, they've, you've tried to have these conversations, but it's kind of gotten to the point now where you almost feel like the best thing you can do for everybody involved is to simply walk away. Or maybe it's with your faith. Maybe you've prayed over and over and over for years and years and years for someone in your family to be healed and they haven't been healed yet. Maybe you're a parent and you've had a child that has walked away not only from the church, but from you. And there's this friction and you've been praying and 
And you just got to the point now, like, do I just stop even inviting them to church? Do I even stop talking to them about God at all? I think the truth is we've all had moments like that where we feel like quitting. I know for me, there were plenty of times in ministry where things didn't look the way I thought they should look. Saw things that I didn't want to see, heard things I didn't want to hear. And it caused me to question what I really believed God was calling me to do. And I think we've all had those, I think we've all had those moments where a pastor gets up on stage and says something inspirational, like, you know, the best is yet to come and your best days are, are not behind you, they're ahead of you. And you want to believe that. I think most of you in the room, you want to believe that. But the truth is, is you have seen some things. You've watched people who claim one thing, but live another, anybody. You, you've heard some things that you didn't want to hear. People said some things to you that you can't, un, you, can't, you can't forget. You can't unhear. And you used to believe that like God had a plan for your life. You used to believe that God could turn it around. You used to believe that your best days are ahead of you, but now you're not so sure. And the writer of Hebrews says that you need to persevere and be faithful, be obedient in order to experience the promise of God. And see, just because God makes a promise doesn't mean that you possess it. Like God can make a promise and he can promise that you and I in Christ, we have all things in heavenly places. We have everything in Christ that because of the Holy Spirit, if you're a believer living inside of you, that you have access to joy, you have access to peace, you have access to love. But that doesn't mean that you possess it, does it? Like you have access and God's given it to you, but that doesn't mean you're walking in the promise that God made. And so what I wanna do today is I actually want to go to an Old Testament passage that many of you are gonna be familiar with really in order to illustrate this idea and illustrate these two verses I read to you just a second ago. And what I wanna do is I wanna to go to the sixth book of the Bible. So you got Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then Joshua. And we're gonna to go to the sixth chapter of the sixth book of the Bible. And what we're gonna read is the, the people of God are about to walk into the promise that God gave, but they have not possessed it yet. And we're going to watch God's instruction in order to step in to God's promise. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me. I'm going to be in Joshua chapter 6. I'm reading from the NIV version if you have it. But if you don't have it, you can look on the screen above me. Or you can pull out your phone if you like, as long as you're not playing games and disrespecting the church and the word of God. Amen. All right. Joshua chapter 6. You ready for the word? Say, I'm ready. Here's what it says. It says, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went in. Or no one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Say six. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven days time say seven with the priests blowing the trumpets when you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets have the whole army give a loud shout let's try that let's give a, a loud renovation shout on three ready one two three that was a quick shout y'all come on but he says not yet first i want you to walk around the city six times for six days then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up and everyone straight in. What I want to do is I want to give you three things I see in this passage that I think are going to be helpful for you. And really, I think are the reasons why so many of us don't actually end up possessing what God promised to you and I. Three reasons why we tend to stop short of what God has spoken over our lives. Three reasons that we have a hard time believing that the best is yet to come. Here's number one, write this down. Our perspective gets blocked, don't it? Our perspective gets blocked. We can't see over the wall. Our, our perspective of what's going on 
gets blocked. And I think a lot of times God will make us a promise, but we find ourselves like Joshua staring at a wall. Now, how many of you have heard of this story before, that Joshua in the, in the Battle of Jericho? Anybody raise your hands? VBS, remember this, the little song? You know, Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. You know that song? Right? Okay, some of you are like, nope, didn't do that. That's fine. You didn't have to grow up in church. I didn't grow up in church much, but I do remember that one. What's funny is the song's cute, um, but it, I think, if I'm going to be honest with you, I think Joshua would think it's a stupid song. I ain't going to lie. And the reason why is because I just think that that song, it just oversimplifies the entire process, doesn't it? I mean, it wasn't just like, oh, well, you know, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. No, no, no. There, there was a process. See, Joshua had to wander around in the desert for 45 years. And see, what God spoke to Abraham, then Isaac, then Jacob, said, one day you will get into the promised land. Then he spoke it to Moses, who then wandered around in the desert, but didn't go in. Now God is calling Joshua to finally possess the promise that he made to his people. And so it wasn't just like, oh, a little, a little song, you know, oh, well, Joshua fought the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. No, no, no. Had to wait for 45 years. And some of us complain when God doesn't do what we want in 45 minutes. He had to wait for 45 years. Now, what you need to understand about Jericho is that this was the first battle they had to face in order to experience the promise. How many of you know the first one's always the hardest one, isn't it? I mean, it's like, the, it's just hard to start. I mean, it's like, if I could just get to the gym, then I can work out. You know what I'm talking about? Like, let me just get there. So they had to fight this battle. And what you need to understand about Jericho was Jericho was not a big city. In fact, it was actually a pretty small city that scholars tell us that they could walk around the entire city in about one hour. And so the problem with Jericho wasn't that the city was big. The problem with Jericho was that its walls were secure. And the truth is about many of us is that what you're facing right now may look big to you, but how many of you know it's small to God? Like the issue may not be the size of it. It may be what you're staring in front of, looking at because your perspective is blocked. I remember hearing this story about an Impala, not the car, but the animal. Anybody know what an Impala is? I think it's... No, I'm sorry. It's, a, is it a, it's an Impala. Yeah, not a Malibu, an Impala. You got a picture? That's an Impala, all right? It's like a mini gazelle. And here's what's interesting about the Impala. The Impala stands just under four foot tall. So it's about three and a half foot, foot tall on average. And they can run up to 60 miles per hour. The jokers are fast, all right? Not as fast as the cheetah, but they're fast. They will juke a lion in a heartbeat, all right? And what's interesting, what I love most about them, because I used to play ball, is that they can actually jump up to 10 foot high. That means they can dunk on LeBron. You know what I'm talking about, all right? And they have the ability to leap 30 foot in distance. And so they're these little small animals that got a lot of power and a lot of potential. What's interesting is what it takes to contain them. All it takes to contain one of these animals at a zoo is a four foot wall. Now, how is that possible? If it has the ability to jump 10 foot high, run 60 mile per hour and jump 30 foot in distance, how in the world could a four foot wall contain an Impala? Because as long as it sees the barrier, it will never take the leap. As long as it sees what's in front of it and doesn't know what's on the other side, it will never actually jump. And that's the same thing is true about many of us is that you see a barrier in front of you and many of us aren't stepping into what God has called us to because our eyes are focused on the barrier rather than seeing the blessing on the other side. And do you know what I think that Impala needed and what you need are some friends <laughs> just to like, hey, I know all you can see is the barrier. But I promise you, jump over it. You got, what, you got what it takes inside of you. God put something inside of you. You have the potential to overcome that barrier, but you're never going to do it. You will stay enslaved if your perspective stays blocked. 
And the truth is, is so many of you have been set free, but you're still living enslaved because your perspective is blocked. And you need a friend. You need somebody to come in and remind you and encourage you and tell you, listen, that there, there may be walls that you're looking at. You might be staring down a situation that's too big for you. You may be dealing with something in your life that seems too overwhelming. You may be looking at a marriage. You may be looking at a kid. You may be looking at a job. And you, you start to think, I will never get past that barrier. That's where you need somebody to be on the other side of the wall who's been where you've been, who is where you want to be, that goes, let me tell you something. I know you see the barrier. But I don't care what you've seen. I don't care what you've heard. I don't care what you believe because the God inside of you is greater than the barrier in front of you. You need somebody to remind you of what Peter says that you have everything you need to live a godly life that is honoring to him. You have everything you need if you're in Christ to live the life God's called you to live. But so many of us have our, our perspective blocked by the walls in front of us. What are your walls? I mean, Joshua had Jericho. What's your Jericho? What are the things that are blocking your perspective from the promise that God wants to give? What, what's the wall in front of you? Now, I want to go back to verse one. I think it's, I think it's powerful says this, now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands along with its king and its fighting men. Now I got a problem with those two verses and I'm gonna tell you why, because I, 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 I like verse two, but I like verse two, but the problem is, is verse two don't go with verse one. Because in verse one, it says that the walls of Jericho were secured. But verse two, God says, see, I've delivered Jericho into your hands. You know what I love about God? Is that only God can speak in past tense of a battle that hasn't even begun yet. And see, some of us are so worried about what's coming up. And it's hard for us to see past the barrier and God's going, I ain't worried about that. I'm not stressed about that. I live outside of time. I ain't got to pop Prozac trying to calm my nerves down. I'm a God who's in control. And sometimes you need some friends. You, that's why you're in church. Come on, give yourself a round of applause for being in church today. Come on. I'm going to tell you why. Because sometimes you, you need to be in a room where when you're going through something and you're staring at a wall and God has promised a victory, you can stand next to somebody and look around and know what they're going through and their praise starts to shift your perspective. There's something that happens when the people of God step into the presence of God and start worshiping him before the battle ever began. Because our God has the ability, he's that powerful, that confident, that in control, that he can speak about a victory in your life and the battle hadn't even started yet. And so oftentimes we, we stop short because we allow our perspective to be blocked. Let me, let me give you the second reason. Our progress isn't always obvious, is it? That when you're trying to do what God's called you to do, I mean, your, your, your progress isn't always obvious. And so what happens, you know, God speaks to Joshua and says, all right, Joshua, here's what I want you to do. I want you to have them march around the city for six days. And on the seventh day, I want you to tell them to shout. And when you shout, the walls are going to come down and you will receive the promise that I've given. But sometimes our progress, it's not always obvious. And so let's read this verse six. It says, so Joshua, son of Nun, called the priest and said to him, take up the ark of the covenant of the Lord and have seven priests called carry trumpets in front of it. And he ordered the army, advance, say advance. advance. March around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. Verse eight, when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests carrying the seven trumpets before the Lord went forward, blowing their trumpets and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed them. The armed guard marched ahead of the priests who blew the trumpets and the rear guard followed the ark. All this time, the trumpets were sounding. Watch what Joshua says. But Joshua had commanded the army, 
Do not give a war cry. Do not raise your voices. Do not say a word until the day I tell you to shout. Then shout. Somebody shout. Come. Wow. I bet you the people online shout a louder than that. Let's say, let's shout on three. One, two, three. There we go. All right. So we had the ark of the Lord carried around the city, circling it once. Then the army returned to camp and spent the night there. Joshua got up early the next morning. The priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests carrying the seven trumpets went forward, marching behind the ark of the Lord and blowing the trumpets. The armed men went ahead and the rear guard followed the ark of the Lord while the trumpets kept sounding. So same thing. On the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. You know, and I, I just want to dive into that story because I just wonder, you know, if they, they didn't see the progress. Have you ever had a moment in your life where God, what God said didn't match up with what you see? Where what God spoke over you isn't the reality that you live in? Where God said, I'm going to heal and you heard the voice of God say, I'm going to heal, but you still feel broken on the inside. Where God told you to be generous with what you have, but then yet you're looking at your finances and you don't even know how you're going to pay your own bills. Where God spoke to you and said, I want you to share your faith, but you're still having doubts in your own life. I'm just asking, like, have you ever had a moment where God has spoken to you and said, here's my promise, but that doesn't line up with your reality? Anybody? Anybody? And so what do they do? They take a step day one, take a step day two. They're walking around the city. And I just imagine, you know, they don't really see their progress. And and I think that if like we, if we, if, 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 if we would have written this story, maybe like if if I were God now, (laughs) let me say that's a scary thought. I'm not God. Okay. Let me make that very clear. Nor do you want me to be God. Okay. But if I were God and I was writing this story, you know, I'm a three on the Enneagram. I got a lot of twos that work with me, that kind of thing. Any threes and twos in the house? All right, great. And some of you are like, what are you even talking about? We'll talk about that later, all right? But um, we like our words of affirmation, all right? We like to know that we're making a little progress. If I were God, I would probably give them, you know, a little, like, progress report. You know what I'm saying? Like, after the first day they walk around, I would let a couple bricks fall to let them know they're doing something. You know what I'm talking about? Like, after the second day, maybe they fall a little bit more, and they can kind of see through, and they're like, all right, I'm making, I'm making some progress here. But God doesn't let the wall fall. They don't know the progress. And I just have a theory. My thought is maybe the reason that God doesn't allow anything to happen for six days is so that they wouldn't rely on their own strength. They would rely on his. That that maybe, maybe for you, like the reason maybe something hasn't happened because you're thinking that you can do something in your own strength to make the wall fall. And maybe God's allowing the wall to stand and going, well, you just march around the city and trust that I'll take care of it. And see, here's what's interesting. I didn't even drop this yet. Um, if you were there, just imagine walking around the wall. Joshua didn't tell them how long they had to walk. Now, God told Joshua, but Joshua didn't tell them. He didn't tell them how long they had to walk. So imagine you signed up for the army. You're ready to fight. You're fighting for the Lord. You're going to take some ground. And you just, on day one, you get out there, you got your sword, you're ready, and you're like, all right, let's go to battle. Let's take Jericho. And what, is, what does Joshua have you do? Just walk around the city for an hour. And you come home and your wife's at camp. And she's like, hey, how'd it go today? Did you get them? And you're like, I think Joshua just wanted us to stretch our legs a little bit. We're going to get them tomorrow, though. So the next day, day two, you get up. What does Joshua have you do? Walk around the city again. Same thing. Come home to your wife. Your wife's like, hey, did you get them today, my big, strong warrior? Did you take them? You know what I mean? And you're like, no. No. What did you do? Uh, We just took a walk. (laughs) Well, you need to talk to Joshua about that. See, problem is Joshua told us not only can we not shout, we can't even speak. Now, I got a theory on that. Do you know why I think Joshua told them they couldn't speak? Because 40 something years earlier, they talked their way out of God's promise to them. And I just wonder if some of us, like the reason we're not stepping into what God has called us to is because we're talking ourselves out of it. Or, or maybe you heard some things, 
Maybe you're allowing somebody else to say some things to you, and that's why you're having a hard time believing that the best is yet to come. And I just got a question. Who told you that? Who told you you couldn't be healed? Who told you you couldn't be saved? Who told you that you couldn't be forgiven? Who told you that you'll always struggle? Who told you your kid would never come back to the Lord? Who told you that? See, sometimes the best strategy is to just shut up and march so you don't talk yourself out of the promise God made. Turn to your neighbor and say, shut up and march. Turn to your other neighbor and say, shut up and march. Some of you have been waiting to say that to your spouse all day long. Just shut, shut up and march. Shut up and march. He says, just... Shut up and march. And he didn't tell them how long they would have to do it for. Here's the third reason I think we have a hard time believing. The best is yet to come. Why our faith fails. Why we tend to stop short of what God has called us to. Because we don't know the timeline. Do we? Anybody else prayed and expected God to do something and he didn't do it on your timeline? It's, it's, it's hard to be faithful when you don't know how long you got to be faithful. I mean, I really, I really believe that if God just said, hey, listen, boys, Joshua, I want you to tell them this. Hey, march around every single day. They'd have been good. Like if God told you, hey, if you work out one day, you're going to pop an ab. Everybody be popping broccoli every day. You know what I'm saying? Like you could do anything if you're single and God said, hey, I want you to be pure in every single relationship that you have for two years. And at the end of two years, I'm going to give you a husband. You'd have no problem being pure. If God said, listen, you're going to have to work this job for a little bit, but in six months, you're going to get the promotion and all these people getting on your last nerve. Now you're going to be their boss. You could be faithful for six months, couldn't you? <laughs> but problem, we don't always know the timeline. I remember being a personal trainer for a season. And uh, one of the things I love making my clients do to get strong in their core, you know, I'd make them plank. Anybody love planks? All right, like three people in the house. All right. And what, the question they would always ask me, I'm like, all right, we're going to do planks. They would say, how long? And I would say, shut up and plank. You know what I'm saying? And they would get down to like, how long? I'm like, well, how long do you think you can plank for? 30 seconds? Like, yeah, I could do 30 seconds. A minute? Uh, yeah, I can do a minute. Two minutes? No way. And so I'm like, shut up and plank. Turn to your neighbor and say, shut up and plank. So they would start planking, you know, and they're on the ground, you know, and their butt's way in the air trying to cheat, you know, and body's shaking and shivering. And, and I just got the clock the whole time. And they're, they're just planking. Like, am I done? I'm like, nope, not yet. You still got five seconds. And then I would let like 15 go. I'm like, am I done? Nope, still got two seconds. That's a long two seconds, you know. And then finally they would get up. And I'm like, you went for almost three minutes. What? Yeah. Because there's more in you than you think. Sometimes the demand creates the supply. Sometimes I just wonder, like, if God will allow us to walk around the walls for a season, just so you know that he's not wasting it. He, he will allow you to pray for something for a season as the scriptures say, to see if you will keep knocking and keep seeking and keep believing that the best is yet to come. That if it ain't good, God ain't done. That if there's still something that God promised, it will come to pass, but it may not happen on your timeline. And so I just came to give a message to somebody who, who is walking around the walls and they feel like it's never going to change. It's never going to get better. And let me tell you something. You may be on lap six and not even know it yet. You may be walking around and you're about to give up and you're about to stop and you're about to walk out of your marriage and you're about to give up on your friend and you're about to stop talking to your kid. And I just came to tell somebody, don't stop on six. Don't stop on what you understand. Don't stop on what you know. Don't stop on what you believe. Because God says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what I have in store for people who love me. The best is yet to come. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. So what happens? They're marching six days. No progress. Walking around, looking at this wall. 
And on the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. Except that on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city and all that is in it are to be devoted to the Lord. On the seventh day, don't don't stop on the sixth. And you don't know if you're on the sixth, but you might be. What I'm trying to get you to see is don't stop on your own understanding. Six is the number of man. Seven is the number of completion. If God promised it, it will come to pass. If God said it, it will happen. And what if, see, we get so focused on what God wants to do for us. What if the reason God had them walking around the walls wasn't because of what God just wanted to do for them, but what God wanted to do in them? What if the barrier you're looking at that you think was meant to break you is actually the thing that God will use to build your faith? I don't know if you know this, but we have a God who will take a barrier and build it into a blessing. What if the barrier in your life that is blocking your perspective of God and the promise he's given you, what if the barrier is simply a setup for the blessing and the promise that God's given? You do realize you don't get a resurrection without a crucifixion first. And sometimes God will use your greatest barriers to build your faith. What if the barrier from your past God wants to use to build the faith in someone else's life? What if the thing that has blocked you for so long, that's kept you from really believing God, from really seeing God, from really hearing from God, what if that's the thing that God wants to turn around and use so that others can believe through you? They entered in and it says, and the whole city shall be devoted to God. And so I just, I just need somebody to hear this. Don't stop. If you're thinking about quitting right now, you're thinking about walking away, persevere and do the will of God so that you can experience the promise of God. Don't stop on six. Don't stop praying. Don't stop believing. Don't stop being obedient. Don't stop trying. Don't stop inviting. Don't you give up on that person that seems too far gone. Don't you think that you can't overcome your sin by the power of the gospel. Don't you stop doing it. Because listen, if you will live every day like it's your last lap, one day it will be. One day you are gonna experience the fruit of the faith you had when you walked around the wall. Don't stop. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has in store for those who love him. We have a God who takes graves and turns them into gardens. We have a God who takes barriers and turns them into blessings. We have a God who takes people who were dead and makes them alive. And do you know how they entered the promised land? The same way we do, by faith. By faith. Jesus is the greater Joshua who heard from God, did what he said, remained silent as he was crucified. And what the enemy thought was the barrier that would kill him would be the very thing that God would use to build the kingdom. We enter in by faith and faith alone, trusting in the word of God. John 1 says that Jesus is the word of God 
that became flesh for you and I so that by believing in him and him alone, you and I can step into the promise that God has made that anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved, that anyone who says that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that believes he was resurrected from the grave will be saved. Will you stand your feet with me? I just want to pray this over you and we're going to sing a song that's super familiar and just make a connection here. The first prayer I want to pray is just for those of you who you've thought about quitting and God brought you here today to speak something into your heart to not stop. To take a step. Listen, no one can take the step for you. No one can take the leap for you. That's your job. What I hope happened today through the preaching of God's word is that your perspective is shifted to see beyond the barrier and see the blessing that we have in Christ Jesus. And someone pray two prayers. The first one is for any of you who have thought about or are or have stopping short, you've quit and you needed this word today. You needed to hear, I, I, I gotta keep trusting him. Even though the walls hadn't fallen yet, I'm gonna keep being faithful. I'm not gonna sacrifice what I want most for what I want now. So let's pray together. And if that's you, we just stretch your hand towards heaven. Come on, there's hands going up everywhere. God, I pray for every hand, every single person under the sound of my voice that needed this word today. God, I know I needed it. I know there were moments just this week where I thought about quitting on texting my friend where I almost stopped praying for some of my family that doesn't know Jesus. God, I pray for every hand lifted who've had a hard time, who's seen, some, who's heard, who struggled to believe your promise. God, I pray that you would give them the faith to trust you so they can persevere and see the promise come to pass. And Father, right now, I pray for anyone who's never put their faith in you, who've tried to make the wall fall on their own, that's tried to earn their way into the promised land, tried to earn their way into heaven. God, I pray for them right now that they would see that there is nothing they can do except to trust you. That man, number six, cannot get in by their own strength, but must place their faith in you. Perfection, completion. God, may we trust you with our lives. And church, right now, I wanna pray for I want all of us to pray for those who are coming to Jesus today and saying, I, I trust him. I give my life to him. Pray this out loud with me. Say, God, we love you. Today, I give you my life. I surrender. I believe that you died on the cross for me. That you resurrected from the grave so that I could be forgiven and set free. I believe your promise. Today, I make you my Lord. This is my new beginning. God, you say in your word that the angels in heaven celebrate when one sinner comes to repentance by the goodness of God. So God, we thank you for saving today. We thank you for working. God, and we celebrate that decision right now in Jesus' name. Everyone who believed us said, amen. Put your hands together. Come on, church.